Okay, so there it is, top of the agenda. And his first post-election appearance today, Justin Trudeau announced that travelers will, as you just saw, need to get vaccinated or you ain't getting on the plane, train, or bus. But when will the federal government actually release their own long-promised vaccine travel passport, one that would work for international travels as well. And after promising a two-dose fall, the country, in parts of it anyway, like Alberta and Saskatchewan, are facing a fourth wave fall. Federal government are deploying or plan to military to Alberta, and they've offered to help Saskatchewan. So now that the new Trudeau government has the election behind them, how quickly will the federal government's pandemic response start kick into action? And will the federal vaccine passports be top of the agenda? Let's find out. Joining me now is the newly re-elected Patty Haidu, Minister of Health. Uh, first of all, uh, congratulations on getting re-elected. Um, that's never an easy thing a third time. Uh, now, just tell me, you are still the health minister. I am, yes, yes. That is uh, the process here in Canada, as you know. We are we are we're responsible for the portfolios we held before the election. Uh, and then when the new cabinet is sworn in, we'll see. Okay, let, let's get to some of the, the key issues that were not interrupted. The, the COVID-19 crisis in Alberta and Saskatchewan is obviously at a very critical phase, but it started to really blow up during the federal election. Um, was your government too consumed by the election to actually help address the growing crisis in those provinces? No, I don't think so at all, Evan. In fact, our officials continued to work together and at the deputy level and other technical levels uh, have been there for the provinces and territories throughout COVID-19. Um, obviously, we have a you know, stockpile of a, a number of different medical needs uh, that the provinces and territories might have. And uh, certainly, you know, that work has been continued throughout uh, many of the different groups. But that did you, but, but like specifically, problem. Minister, did you or the Prime Minister raise questions with Alberta Premier Jason Kenney or uh, about his open for summer plan? At some point, sh did you pick up the phone and say, you guys are going to be in real trouble here. Did you intervene? Well, I actually wrote a letter just before the election was called, as you might recall, Evan, in fact, uh, calling on Minister Shandro to demonstrate the scientific evidence that uh, their Open for Summer plan rested on. In fact, um, you know, obviously indicated that Canada will continue to support the provinces and territories in any way that they needed, but we expressed concern about that plan just before the election, as you know. And so, um, as I said, throughout the, uh, throughout the election the officials continue to work together they they are working together as we speak as you know uh, the provinces do have the jurisdiction over delivery of health care but we've always said we'll be there with the uh, supports that we can provide as necessary uh, was it a mistake to have dr. Teresa Tam only give two press conferences throughout the federal election campaign uh, did that give the message that essentially this is over and uh, things were falling apart in Alberta, falling apart in Saskatchewan. And yet, Dr. Teresa Tam and that voice was essentially missing in action. Was that a mistake? Well, those decisions around um, how to brief Canada were made, as you know, by the officials. In fact, um, Dr. Tam, you know, gave modeling a number of times that projected that um, too early release of measures could lead to surging cases and that although we were seeing great progress on vaccination, that, of course, there were still a high number of people unvaccinated. This was uh, repeatedly communicated prior to the election and during those briefings and in a number of different ways throughout the election. So too, I would just brief, just, for, just to be there's one modeling and there's two briefings overall. As Dr. Tam has, as you know. So uh, again, this is not new information that if you release your measures too quickly, uh, despite even having you know fairly high levels of vaccination, depending on where we are in the country, that we could right. see a surge of cases that could overrun our health care systems. And that's exactly right. the risk that Alberta and Saskatchewan find themselves in now. But you know, like without that message, with the fact that there was a federal election on there was a sense that well I guess things are pretty good enough we, we can have a federal election and, and and you wonder if that disincentivized people from getting the vaccine but now you're in the position where the federal government is going to deploy military aid to Alberta uh, or at least is ready to not Saskatchewan should the federal government I know you have to you wait for the provinces to ask for aid again have you picked up the phone or has the prime minister picked up the phone and said don't wait for some political reason, we are sending an aid now. People are dying. 
Well, well, uh, two points. Uh, I've spoken with both health ministers since the election about the need to be planning for what kinds of resources they need. Look, it's very easy to ship off stuff. If they need, you know, additional test capacity, if they need uh, PPE or therapeutics, even more vaccines. Those are the kinds of things that we can get out the door in 24 hours to 48 hours. Health human resources is different, though, because, of course, they're in hot demand all across the country. It's, it's This is where the real crunch is. is people, uh, people who have the kinds of skills to right. support ICUs. And I'll just say this, you know, it's, it's um, you know, healthcare systems uh, are, are obviously controlled and planned uh, for by the provinces and territories. We have a number of professionals available across the country through contracts with the Red Cross, through the military, but we do need to know what mm. specific people are needed where and by when, and that way we can deliver those resources to the provinces as they need them. Your uh... Um, government has made vaccine mandatory for federal public servants and those working in federally regulated transportation sectors. 1,700 healthcare workers in Quebec are facing suspension for not getting their first dose. Is the federal government prepared to and can it not only suspend public servants who don't get the jab, but fire them? Well, I think the Prime Minister has been clear that this is about safe workplaces. This is about making sure that wherever you show up to work, that you have the assurance that everyone is taking uh, each other's safety with the utmost seriousness. And I know that those conversations are ongoing right now with the federal public service and the unions. And uh, that's the intent, that in order to work together in a common space, that people are fully vaccinated and protecting each other. But can they be fired? Is the federal government prepared to fire people who don't comply? As I said, Evan, those are conversations that are happening right now with the federal public service and the unions um, that represent those right. public servants. And, you know, I would say that uh, by and large, uh, people understand that uh, we need to protect each other in these common spaces, especially workplaces where people have, uh, in mm -hmm. many cases, situations where they have to work closely together. Uh, we'll continue to do this work. And I, I support the prime minister's uh, objective here, which is to make sure that no matter where someone is working in the federal public service that they are protected in their workplace. Uh, Minister, when can Canadians see your government's detailed plan that would require proof of vaccinations for domestic travel, planes, trains, buses? Um, will it be announced before the House reconvenes at, quote, the end of the fall? I think the Prime Minister was clear today when he said that we're working on this very expeditiously and it's his hope that we can have this in place in weeks. Again, there are lots of moving parts to this from an operational perspective and a partner perspective, but that is the intent and to have it done as quickly as possible so that anyone who's traveling on federally regulated means of transportation, again, has the assurance that they're traveling in a space that is safe and that is uh, okay. that is comprised of fully vaccinated individuals. I just want to press. You said in weeks so the house doesn't have to be sitting for this to happen look uh, again this is um it, it, the prime minister was clear today that this is a, it, this is a priority for him it's a priority for us and again it's about the safety of canadians it's about the safety of workplaces so i know that he's pressing on the officials and on the appropriate ministers to get this work done Again, people are wondering, look, you know the EU has already had their uh, green pass for months, and they've implemented it. You can travel to almost anywhere in the EU and flash their QR code. Is Canada considering joining that, or is there waiting for compliance with the U.S.? Like, what, why are we so far behind the Europeans? They've had it for months. Well, my colleague, uh, Minister Mendicino, has been working on the proof of vaccination approach that's a federal proof of vaccination for uh, international travel. This does require working with provinces and territories, though, because they do hold the personal private health data for Canadians. And so I know that work is underway with the provinces and territories looking at the most efficient and expeditious way while also protecting people's private health information, which is of utmost importance to Canadians. You were on the record a lot saying that this is not going to be over till everyone around the world has got a shot. Now you saw Joe Biden get his booster shot, the third dose. A lot of Canadians are like, okay, we need a third dose. Countries like Israel, they're getting a third dose. Do you support getting Canadians a booster shot? Is it ethical for Canadians to get a third dose when many countries around the world have not had a first? 
Well, actually, just today, uh, NACI released new guidance recommending the use of booster shots for people who live in congregate settings like long-term care homes and other places where people are living closely together. Um, I support what the scientists and the, rec and, the rec and the experts are recommending. We've always followed the recommendations of NACI and the other scientists that are advising us here in Canada. We'll continue to do that. And we can do both, Evan. We can make sure that we protect Canadians and um, okay. contribute to places like COVAX with uh, contributions of money and an excess vaccine. Last question for you, Minister. Uh, a lot of families who send their kids back to school don't have, they're, they're wondering what happens for kids under the age of 12. I know the FDA in the United States has already given data uh, from Pfizer about the efficacy of Pfizer for kids under the age of 12. Has Health Canada given you any data uh, as to when families can find out when the under 12 set can get a vaccine? Well, we have had a very good relationship with Pfizer, and in fact, the officials have been in constant contact with the corporation. Um, we anticipate that we'll get a submission, uh, hopefully in the early stage of October, and as soon as we receive the data from the company, the regulators are well situated to very rapidly review that data. As you might recall, we invested millions upon millions of dollars into the regulatory body so that they would have the additional capacity from a science perspective, from an right. administrative perspective, to rapidly review these applications, not just for vaccines, but for many other uh, devices and therapeutics associated with COVID. So we're well positioned to be able to review that data as quickly as it comes in. Finally, what's your message right now to Alberta and Saskatchewan? Well, first of all, my heart is with the residents of both provinces. I know that this is continuing to be a scary time for many people, but my primary message is please, please get vaccinated. If you haven't been vaccinated already, do it for the children in your life. Do it for the small businesses in your community, for the many other folks that are relying on a, a school year that is as normal as possible. And if you know someone who is hesitant, then please make sure that you support them to get the information in a way that helps them make right. that really critical choice. All right, I got to leave it there. Health Minister Patty Hyder, good to have you back on the program. Appreciate it. Great to see you, Evan.